Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Quigley on Divorce, a behind the scenes look. I'm your host, James Quigley, and I'm delighted today to not only be podcasting again, but to actually have a special guest from literally across the pond. I am pleased to introduce our special guest today, Carolee Katsubanis, who is joining us via the wonders of technology all the way from Australia. Carolee, welcome. Thank you very much, James, and hello to everyone who is tuning in. So I think had I not made the introduction, I think your accent would have given it away, but um, I'll just, let me give a little bit of a, a sort of a backdrop to how we met, which is just um, the wonders again of technology. So with our respective Instagram accounts and trying to get the word out about the messages we're trying to deliver, we connected on uh, social media and we've met and had some Zoom conferences and got to know a little bit about what each other's doing in the world as it tangentially relates to divorce. I'm a divorce lawyer, obviously. But Kara Lee has written a book and I thought this was just absolutely fascinating because it's something that we don't really talk about um, so much in the middle of divorce cases, but it touches on so many people that are going through divorce, getting divorced, been divorced, and so forth, and that's the issue of step parenting. So Kara Lee has written an outstanding book, very useful, very practical, called Step Parenting with Purpose. Everything you wanted to know, but were uh, too afraid to ask. And what an amazing book. And again, Kara Lee, I'll let you sort of speak to some of your experiences and how it is that you arrived at the place of writing this book. But uh, again, what a, what a really uh, fascinating topic for us to talk about today, because so many people, Kara Lee, that are viewing and listening um, my podcasts are in the very situation that you've lived. So tell the viewers and listeners a little bit about how you came to this place of actually writing a book. And by the way, was this something you just thought of a year ago, two years? How, how long has this been in the making? All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone. I must say that I absolutely adore the American accent. And it's quite funny when you say that you can pick my Australian accent. And I just think it's lovely that both our nations have been terrific allies and solidarity and we all love each other from other countries. Amen. But look, getting back to the book. So I say, so here, let me just start this again. So here in Australia, my role is I'm a mother to two children. So, oh, now I've really stuffed this up. Let me just take this again. So three, two, one. <laughs> so James, look, thank you. James, thanks very much. So here in Australia, professionally, I am an Australian television commentator, journalist, columnist, and media trainer. I've worked across Australia's mainstream television, radio, newspapers, magazine, and online for the past 20 years. I am well known for news and current affairs. But one thing that I'm incredibly passionate about at the other side of my life is I've actually been a step parent, a step mum or a step mom, as you would say, for the last 15 years. Um, I'm very lucky. I married my children's father when his children were 11 and 12. Those lovely two young adults are now 26 and 25. Our children, uh, we have a little boy who's 11 and two girls who are 10 and 8. And it's very funny when you say, you know, when did I get the idea to write the book? I actually say that with my book, Step Parenting with Purpose, Everything You Wanted to Know But Were Too Afraid to Ask, I actually say that it is the book that I wish that I had had when I began my step parenting journey 15 years ago. And the reason for this is I say that my book tackles many of the questions that you no doubt have and are too afraid to ask naturally. I believe it will help you navigate your own sometimes conflicting emotions. It'll give you insights into some of the more challenging step parenting events that can crop up and also tips on how to engage and manage the X. Everything in the book is true or it has happened firsthand that I've witnessed that I know that it is. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist but I have other university or college degrees and I have studied a psychology course at Yale during COVID, which is great. But the reason why I wrote the book is twofold. When I first met my husband with his children, I 
pretty early on, I wanted to meet my husband's ex-wife because I wanted to know what she expected of me. I was 32 years old. I'd never married. I'd never been in a long-term relationship. I certainly didn't have any children. And I wanted to meet because I wanted to reassure her that I didn't want to take on her role as a mum. Her children had a mum and they had a dad, very lucky in that way. Divorce and separation happens to so many people, as James will know, but it is a real minefield. And the sad thing is she actually never wanted to meet me. Even though I would be raising her children half the time, in Australia we have many different custody options. Some families do one week on, one week off. Other families do what they call an alternate fortnight. So you might get the children every alternate Thursday to a Sunday. Whatever the court orders are, child support is mandated. It's all paid. We were all very normal people. There were no, you know, violence orders, nothing like that. Very standard situation. And I remember I had said to my husband, you know, in six years' time, your son and daughter, they'll, they'll be nearly 18. They'll, they'll be 18. What happens with the 18th? What happens with the 21sts? Well, I'm here to tell everyone today that we're 15 years down the track and I've never actually spoken to or met my husband's ex-wife. Wow. Let me ask you, let me ask you that to that point. Do you think 15 years in retrospect, looking back, things could have been better, easier, had you had had you and your husband's ex-wife been able to communicate on some level or have met, or do you think it was worked out just fine the way it was? Well, look, it's when a split happens, my husband and his ex-wife had met very young, um, Greek Australian background, probably lots of pressure from parents to get married very young, and they'd just simply grown apart. Could things have turned out better? Yeah, I think that they definitely could have because the number one point that I make in the book is that your ex is not your children's ex and never will be. And I say this again and again, that your ex is not your children's ex and never will be. Uh. You won't meet anybody that admits to bad mouthing their ex or their ex's new partner, whether you're married, whether you're a long-term de facto, whether you're a significant other. But it doesn't matter your socioeconomics, your race, where you live, anything like that. There are some fundamental things that happen in step-parenting dynamics. And the thing is, my stepchildren never had 18ths or 21sts because they wanted us all to be together. When I say they never had them, they had separate celebrations. Right. And for their 21st, they went and did, did a trip. And it's funny because my stepson, years later, as I said, he's now 26, he actually said, you know, you've never bad-mouthed my mum. And it is a bit of a backhanded compliment that, you know, she's never met you or anything because she had confidence that she knew that you'd raise us. But Hmm. very early on I said to my husband but I'm the one that's not a mum that doesn't have any kids that's trying to do the adult thing and meet someone to find some common ground rules I mean what I didn't want is what I considered normal domestic behavior whether it's picking up the washing putting it in a laundry basket making the beds setting and clearing away a table whatever if they weren't going to do that at their mum's house then I certainly wasn't going to inflict another set of rules because I think that people have to realise that for children of separation and divorce, they're living a life where they're shuffling between two homes. They've right. always got a bag packed. There's some stuff at mum's, there's some stuff at dad's, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think adults sometimes forget it. So the last thing that I wanted to do was that if they were coming over to our house thinking, oh, we've got all these other rules to do and we don't do that. I was willing to be very laid back and just sort of work together. And I'm a very face-to-face -face person. And I really did just want to meet her. As I said, I wanted to say to her, step parenting is not a competition. Parenting is not a competition. I'm there to make a positive difference to your children's lives. 
I know that you might not be happy about that. I mean, she hadn't repartnered at that time, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to say, let's try and get onto the same page. What do you expect from me? This is what I would like to expect from your children or from you, not over demands or anything like that. But sadly that never happened. So it's funny. I wanted to write my book 15 years later because I wanted it to be a retrospective look at things rather than a reactive look at things. And I think that we can all agree that no matter what situation may be in life, when you've gone through a set of circumstances and you can use some objective judgment to look back, you handle things a lot better. Um, And so I also thought that having been a step parent for more than a decade, you've got a lot more perspective. As I said, when I met my husband, his children were 11 and 12. Now they're 25 and 26. And so I've been through a lot of the stages. I've witnessed a lot of the things. Sure. So understanding, and that makes a lot of sense because again, like you, uh, you, you, as we get older, certainly we can look back and say, if I'd have known then what I know now, um, maybe things would be different. So giving that retrospective look, I think is really powerful when you, and again, I don't want to give away the book because people should buy it. They should read it because it's really going to be helpful as a helpful tool. Um, especially coming from someone with your perspectives who, who's, who has lived this dynamic as a step parent and then also having your children with your husband and blending the family together into one, all very uh, insightful. But if I were to ask of you some basic tools, what could be takeaways? And you kind of started talking about at least your perspective saying, boy, it would have been nice for me to have been able to meet my husband's ex-wife just to get on the same page. And it sounds like one of the things that you think is a good idea for step parents is to try to have some consistency within the households, whether you totally agree with it or not, at least try to have some consistency for the kids so that what happens at mom's house isn't wildly different than what happens at dad's house. Would that be sort of at least a a starting point that you would suggest? Absolutely. Um, That's such a good point, James, because the thing is, what I'm really careful in saying is that people break up and split for many different reasons. But once the split has happened, it's happened. I want to make this quite clear that if your husband has left you or your wife has left you for someone else and they've repartnered or they've had an affair on you and they've continued or they've gone on to marry the person they had an affair with or or whatever the situation might be, you have every right to feel angry. That's a normal human emotion. However, I want to make the comment that if you do want to badmouth your ex or their new partner, by all means do it but don't do it in front of your children. That's what your girlfriends are for, for coffee or lunch. That's what in Australia for men, we say your mates are for, for going down the pub or going to the football or in your, in your neck of the woods, going to the ball game or whatever it might be. You're entitled to have those views. It's not about a holier than thou thing. What it's about realizing is that you know, don't make negative comments. Um, I use a situation, it's actually not in the book, but it's, it's, it's a really good one. So a friend of mine, she was a step parent and she was a magnificent cook and she was cooking a lot of things with her stepdaughter, trying to connect. The stepdaughter was 11 or 12 and they were cooking in an afternoon. And the first time that they did that, the little girl went back to the mum's house with a dozen muffins and said, hey, look what I made this afternoon with, with um, we'll just call the lady Mary. And the mum straight away said, get those out of here. Don't want anything to do with the woman. Threw them in the bin. Yeah. Now, up until that point, the little girl had simply thought, this is a fun activity that I'm doing with. What her mum had done was got incredibly jealous that she was doing an activity with another woman, in this case, the stepmom. And it's an activity that the mum wasn't doing with the daughter. Now, I put it to you that if the mum's best friend had taken her daughter for an afternoon and cooked muffins, and she'd come back with a dozen of them, the woman would have loved them. But what happens is, women or men or whoever it might be, you take that pent up, deep seated anger, jealousy, frustration, it all boils up. And by doing that, what you've actually done is you've put your adult 
thoughts and concepts onto your child. Whereas they're just looking at very plainly, I'm doing cooking with Mary. Mary's my stepmom. What I say to people is, okay, yeah, you might not be happy about it. You might wish that you could cook as well as Mary could cook. But the problem is just let it be. Just say that's nice. And that's all that needs to be said. And what you'll find is that weirdness that children feel is just simply taken away. One thing I wanted to say to you is um, I've done a lot of Australian media talking about, talking about shared parenting during COVID. We've had a lot of border closures. We've had a lot of within our state borders here in Western Australia, we had nine regions. So a lot of children, our school year, scholastic year is a little bit different to yours. It goes February to December. So it was coming up to Easter holidays. A lot of kids that lived say in Sydney or Melbourne wouldn't be able to get across state borders to see their parents. And I wrote and I said that with all the border restrictions, the sensible thing to do is to keep the communication going, to do perhaps a FaceTime or this or that, but you're always going to get a crop of parents that will use it as an opportunity to deny those children access to the other parent and or their step parent and or their new siblings, be they step siblings or half siblings or whatever you want to call them. And I hope that during this COVID period, anyone listening or, or, um, or watching that is going through a separation or divorce, I hope that one thing that COVID should have taught us all is that no human being has time to waste. All that pent up anger, it, it's ridiculous. You've got to keep the lines of communication open. You've just got to keep talking and really nut through it. Um, one other example that I can give you is we had a thing that when my stepchildren were collected from our home, when we were living in Melbourne at that time, um, I would watch on a Sunday night and they were to be picked up at five o'clock by their mum and they would have a cell phone and they would be sitting with their knees joggling up and down, looking at this phone and the text would come through and up they'd get, they'd quickly rush out the door, they'd go up the garden path, right up the road and their mum would park either on the opposite side of the road or right up the road. Mm. And I remember the first time that happened, I said to my husband, this is ridiculous. What is wrong with a biological parent coming up, knocking on the door? Now, as I said, I'm a very objective person. Would I have invited her in for a cup of tea and a muffin or to stay with us for dinner? If I'm honest, the answer is no. But what I can tell you I would have done is I would have opened the door, said, hello, Mary. And then I would have turned and said, hey, kids, your mum's here. They would have come with their bags down the hallway and I would have said, have a great week, be good to your mum and we'll see you soon. Yeah. And so that would have taken that, that, that nervousness out of it. Now, you know, for two years, my husband was the one that did the driving back to his ex-wife's house to pick up the kids for the custody drop-off. And it was only my stepson at one point that said to his mum, hey, mum, there's a lot of kids that, whose parents are divorced or separated. Um, you really should be sharing the driving with dad. One of you should drop herself. One of you should be. And then she did it. And then she actually did it. But again, that's another example of a child playing an adult role. Yeah. Um, she was just annoyed, I guess, angry still by the divorce or whatever it was. A lot of women take the attitude, oh, well, you know, we divorced, even though it was a mutual thing. You want to see the kids, you've got to come and get them. And it's so much wasted energy and emotion. And all it shows is it just reinforces this dysfunctional behavior that kids are subconsciously picking up. Yeah. And I'm really clear with what I say in my book that why... I'm so passionate about step parenting is that there is no one right way to step parent in a step parenting family, but there is a right way for human beings and people to behave. You know, nine times out of 10, you have at some stage been in love, created children with this person. Okay. The relationship, the dream has broken up and it's gone. But if your children don't see a good workable relationship between the two of you and or the new partners, what you will do is one, the odds are your own children will end up being step parents within a couple of decades and they will do those same dysfunctional behaviours 
to the stepkids that they will parent. And number two, it just sets up a lifetime of stress and emotion. I don't know, James, if you or anybody listening has perhaps, you know, adult children or you've ever been to a wedding of somebody whose parents have divorced, the, the couple getting married are more stressed out, whether they're 25, 35 or 45, if the parents are divorced, they're more stressed out about the seating arrangements and what's going to happen and this, that and what have you. And I'm passionate about step parenting because I just want people to realise what is important. And what is important at the moment, especially if you're a step parent to younger kids, is those kids. So what, what's, and you said a lot, so what, what I really resonated with me, what you just said, and I want to kind of unpack that, is you, you started by talking about the recognition of people being angry. And, and, and obviously, you, when you're divorced, you're hurt, and from your pain, you know, the obvious manifestation of that is anger. And while we recognize that, some of the things that you suggested people consider doing, I think if we're being realistic in, a, in the message, because I, I, I have this very thing happen with clients even during a divorce. And those things you, you mentioned, jealousy, anger, very real, very raw emotions. It's not realistic to say to people, don't feel the way you feel because they're going to. They're going to be hurt. They're going to be angry. But I think what I'm hearing you're saying in terms of a bit of advice from someone who's lived that is in the moment, set that aside. Even if you don't mean what you say, say hello to the other, you know, the, the, the step parent or to the other spouse or the ex-spouse, um, you know, welcome them to at least knock in the door. They're, they're, like you said, we're not going to have tea and, and coffee and sit down but we can at least present in front of the children respectful. When the daughter brings home the muffins, I'm not thrilled, I'm not excited about it, but I'm gonna still say, oh, thank you, that's really nice, because you're trying to recognize how the child is feeling in that moment. And I see it all the time where all of a sudden, the, the child begins to act out against the step-parent because they feel they have to do that to show their support and love for their mother or for their father. Um, and that's something where, you know, it's, it's too bad. But the reason the kids, I think, do that is because the parents and the step-parent have created that tension where the kids feel like they need to pick sides. That's that absolutely, that? that's so succinct, James. You said it beautifully um, and, and, and you're spot on. I mean, I will say to you that I am glad that I waited my 15 years to write the book because I will tell you that, you know, the first couple of years, I mean, every step parenting journey has ups and downs. But when, after we did the one week on, one week off, when the kids would come over on that Thursday night, especially my stepdaughter, there was some niggly sort of bad behaviour. And it took another friend of mine to say, listen, she's being driven over by her mum. Her mum is hardly likely to say to her and her brother, have a lovely time with your stepmom, help her out, help your dad. They will have been wound up. And as I said, as a 12 or a 13 year old, that showing the loyalty, you, you've hit the nail on the head. That's right. And so, yeah, if people can just realise that, and if there are any, as I said, parents now that are listening to this, be mindful of your actions. It's, it, it has such such deep ramifications and repercussions that can go on and last for years. And I want to say that in nine out of 10 cases, all the step parent wants to do is to make a really positive difference in their stepchild's life. They are not trying to replace you, whether you're a mum or, or a dad, they're not trying to replace you. They can only control what happens at their home. All right, they can only control what happens. And in the same way, you can only control what happens at your home. And it's not good to sort of use kids, I don't want to say the word weapons, but it's not good to have an agenda to get the child to be nasty or this, that or what have you, because your child will still love you. You know, I mean, children play off their mums and dads in a traditional relationship or a traditional marriage. 
but it's not good to sort of fuel that or say, you know, if she tells you what to do, you don't need to do anything. She's not your mum, da, da, da. Don't do that. I would always say to my stepchildren, you know, your mum's working full time too. Try and be nice to her. Try and help her around the house. And I put my hand on my heart and I say, I have never bad mouthed my children's stepmother in front of them. My stepson has even said that a couple of years ago. He said, you've never bad mouthed our mum. And I never would. It's, it's not my way because I just think it's a lot of wasted emotion. Yeah. Well, that says a lot. And that's very hard to do in the moment. Let me ask you this, because it's interesting. Um, a common, well, I guess I have two thoughts. So one, I'm going to ask you a question, but my thought is, um, what I see also is you, there, there's, there's so many different components to this, and you talked about controlling what you can control. And that's a message I send to people in every situation. If you're in a relationship with someone who's a narcissist, you're not going to change them. You can only change your behavior. Same with step parents, but I also think in a situation like this, your husband, who is the individual who has an ex-wife and now a new wife who is the stepmom, he too has to step into the role of making sure there's some consistency and that there's some normalcy. And it might even be where you coming in as a stepmom and having a new relationship, you you need to make sure you and your husband are on the same page so that you're united in terms of the messaging to his ex-wife. But the question I have of you is, did you have, well, the question is, what did the, did your stepchildren call you? Because that is something we get all of the time. You talk about jealousy and anger. Wow. The, you know, child comes home and says, hey, mom and I made some muffins. Mom, what are you talking about? I'm your mom. Don't, don't you dare call her mom. And so, how did you have the, your stepchildren refer to you um, when you were raising them? Okay, so my name is Carolee Katzenbarnas, but my maiden name began with a T. So they would call me KT. So oh. K for Carolee and T for my original surname. So it was KT. And um, it's quite funny. You, you just reminded me of another thing that I have never called my stepchildren my children. I have respected the fact that they have a mum already and that they were two individuals in their own right. Now, I know that some step parents call their own kids and their step kids, all the kids and everything, and that's fine. It's whatever works in your step parent or your blended family. There's no right and there's no wrong. I actually also asked my kids, what would you, the step kids, I should say, what would you like to call me? And they came up with KT. Um, I would never dream of getting them to call me mom or anything like that because they already have a mom and i think that that's a really important point that um you know if a partner is trying to get their kids to call their new partner mom or whatever you know the children have a mom and a dad or two mums or two dads or whatever the makeup of the family might be but yes it was kt so there we go well and you said something in that statement that i think is really an undertone to all of this stuff and it's respect and it is something that I think is a two-way street in, in, every, in any relationship, but particularly in this type of relationship where as a step-parent, you, you have to have a certain level of respect for the children's mom, the children's dad. And that's, that's, and that goes both ways then where, you know, if somebody is a step-parent to your children, for example, the, the position you stepped into, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, that you're going to be part of. And, and so I need to show some respect. And that's very difficult when you contrast that against the, you know, sort of visceral reaction I might see when I'm seeing a step parent with my children and are they trying to take the place of me? And so why would I respect them? But I do think that if people can keep some of these simple messages at the forefront and they can get so much more if they read that they read your book um just help give them that perspective to understand again we're acknowledging the real emotions and so we're not telling people you know don't be angry don't be hurt you know we're saying understanding you may be anger angry or you may be hurt you still have to work together you still have to and you said it before kind of focus on how the kids are seeing this 
and how they might feel if you react a certain way or say a certain thing. So um, really, really uh, powerful messages. I think the book is amazing. Um, is there, if you had to summarize and give that one um, overarching message, um, understanding there's so many more layers to this and so much more depth in the book itself, what would the, the takeaway that you would want viewers and listeners um, to have after our conversation today? <laughs> oh, geez, that's really put me on the spot, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> look, I just, there's so many tips. I think, as I said, the number one tip for me that I find has resonated with so many Australian audiences and also international audiences is just to remember your ex is not your children's ex and never will be. Treat people like you want to be treated. Parenting and step parenting is not a competition. There's no one right way to do it all, but there are some common rules. And as you say, it's having respect for each other as individuals. And it's also a reminder that step parenting can happen to anybody at any time. And in the case of my husband's ex-wife, it was a few years after we got married that she actually met somebody who had two children that were ironically the age of her children when I met them. And it was very wow. interesting because there was just one comment made in that whole time where my stepson said, I think my mum sort of has had a, you know, like really has a wake up call or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not doing it to take pot shots, but what I'm realizing is I, I speak to a lot of people, you know, in my role in media and things like that. And it's quite interesting because as you say, when two people split, they always say, Oh, it's all amicable, all amicable. The odds are you're going to meet somebody and repartner. All right. And it's very rarely that you might meet somebody at the same time. So there's always going to be that person that meets someone new first and it will bring up, as you say, all those emotions and those things that go on. But at the end of the day, you have to realize that, yes, you may end up being a step parent yourself and it is a difficult role. However, if you've done a whole heap of abusive stuff, whether it's verbal, whether it's written or whatever, um, it shouldn't get to that point. You should be adult enough to think whatever you're saying about the step parent, would I want someone to be saying that about me? Because that could be you one day. Yeah. So I just think that basic, as you say, level of respect and also being adult enough to realize that if you are really struggling with those emotions, the jealousy, the anger, the stuff, the bitterness, they're quite normal but you may need to seek some professional counseling Absolutely. because if you, because no one is human. I mean, sorry, sorry. Everyone is human. Yeah. No one is a superhero. There are emotions that have to be worked through. I mean, as I said, I'm 15 years into my step parenting journey. Naturally, my stepkids who are 26 and 25 don't need me as much as the things that I used to do. But I, I, I've taken on that role. No one takes on a step parenting role lightly. James, you commented early that it is a lot of responsibility. And the step parents that I know, we want to do it correctly. We like to have made a difference and to do it properly. But it, it should just be so much easier with communication, no matter what it is, whether if you don't want a face to face or you don't want a phone call emailing or whatever it is i will say that you know my husband and i we were on the same page i expressed various things to him he did the same but it would have been an awful lot easier just to have had a meeting or something or whatever to do that because it was like flying blind and as i said 15 years ago in australia we're a much smaller population I got a lot of information from Oprah and Dr. Phil and also from my own journalistic intelligence in being able to deal with situations and diffuse them. But really, right. my husband's ex-wife was only a couple of years older than I was. She, she was the parent. She'd already been a parent for 11 and 12 years, yet I felt like I was the one that was being far more adult in trying to say to her, what will you expect from me? This is what I'd like to do. So... You know, it is what it is. My conscience is clear. I've done the best job that I could possibly do. But as I say, that my book is a shout out to step parents that are beginning the journey or they're on the journey to say, listen, you're doing the right thing. You will resonate with this. 
but it's also a shout out and a wake up call to parents out there, to grandparents, to other family members that you've all got a responsibility when it comes to divorce, separation and repartnering of thinking of those children and thinking of your actions. That's awesome. I would like to close by picking up on something you just said, which is, and, and this is coming from a place, as you know, probably from in your, the media and what you're seeing, even in Australia, the United States right now is in turmoil. There is a divide. There is a lot of anger. There's a lot of emotion. And what you just said in terms of one of the main takeaways is I hope that everybody considers in step pairing situations, in divorcing situations, in interacting with any individual from any other race, religion, creed, ethnicity, anything, which is treat people how you would like to be treated. It is such a fundamental and really biblical concept that so many of us in the heat of the moment forget that. But I think if someone's going into a step parenting role, and they can keep that in their mind of treating people the way they would want to be treated, which requires some level of empathy. And that's hard sometimes. That, I think, is a great message. And again, as I said before, there's so many other great messages. And I want people to be able to get that message. And so, um, again, step, par uh, step Parenting with Purpose, Carolee Katzenbanis. And I know that you can order the book online <laughs> through Amazon. So, and I know with, again, with COVID and, and, you know, planes and deliveries going you know, from country to country, that's been limited. But um, Kira Lee, is that sort of the best way for people to get the book, read the book through Amazon, or are there other ways where people could order the book? Definitely. Thank you, James. Yes, it is definitely available on Amazon. It's available also on Amazon Kindle. I have a website, which I'm sure James will put up. No, no, you tell. Specific. Let's let's tell. Oh, okay, sure. Absolutely. Okay, so so the um my own website. So okay, I'll start that bit again. Um, thank you, James. Yes, Amazon is definitely the right way. Step parenting with purpose. Everything you wanted to know but were too afraid to ask. Carolee Katzenbanis. It's available also in the Kindle version, but it's available on my website that I set up specifically during COVID, and that is just a normal website. www caroleekatzenbarnas.com and I'm very happy to sign books. What I will say to all you wonderful people in the United States is I'm so flattered and honoured. I have relatives over there. I've had a lot of people from the United States order their hard copy books from me just before the COVID shutdown hit and I will say that shipping at the moment from Australia to United States is 10 weeks. Wow. So your best bet is to go with Amazon. If you want to wait and you want to get an autographed copy, by all means, please send me a message on Instagram, on the website, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm, I'm the only Carolee Katzenbarnas on the social media, which is great. Um, and I'd love it. I would love you to support me. And I really mean my book has been endorsed by some quite prominent people in the United States as well as in Australia. And um, I'm very honoured that it has really resonated with so many people. I think one of the most touching things that I've had is I've had messages from people that have been step parents for many years saying, thank you. Thank you for lifting the lid on some difficult topics. Thank you for tips that you've given or somebody wrote and said, I've been struggling for a year. And I used one of your strategies and you know what? I've got some harmony in my step parenting family. So yes, I love it. And please don't be afraid to contact me on social media. I'm very friendly. I will reply back to you. And um, I hope one of these days that I'm going to actually be able to get to Chicago and meet James face to face. That is the wonderful thing about social media as well. And you know, I know that the United States is going through an awful lot at the moment. We have got rallies here in Australia, but you do have a magnificent country and um, I wish you all the very, very best. Please stay safe with your loved ones during COVID and um, together everybody can make a difference if we all remember to just treat people like we would like to be treated. Amen. That is awesome. One last thing, your um, Instagram or your account or your handle, how do people find you on Instagram? 
so yeah, the Instagram handle is simply just Carolee Cats and Barnes, and I've normally got a suit and a bright, bright pink shirt, which is the same cover as the book. Carolee, K A R. Yes. So K A R A L E E, and Cats and Barnes is K A T S A M B A N I S. And trust me, when I first met my husband, I couldn't pronounce it either. Yeah. Well, I do see in the backdrop behind you, it looks like the Greek Isles back there, if I'm not mistaken. It is. This is a, well, it's funny. This is a photo of um, the holiday last year that we got blown up onto a canvas side. I don't know whether in the United States people do that, but it's very popular in Australia now to take a holiday snap. So although my husband was born in Australia, his parents originally came from Kalamata, which is in the south of Greece. There's a lot of Americans that have, you know, American Greeks that hail from Kalamata. Sure. So that's not Kalamata, but that's one of the islands that we were fortunate enough to look at. And um, it's quite funny to think that we were only there, oh, there about a year ago. So it's yeah. how the world has changed in many ways. Absolutely. And hopefully it's going to continue to change for the better. So Carolee, thanks again so much for joining us all the way from Australia. Uh, again, I'm James Quigley, Quigley and Divorce Behind the Scenes Look. You all know you can contact me, our website, www.beermanlaw.com. And of course, you can always email me, jmquigley at beermanlaw.com. Always here to help, just trying to provide information. I hope this was helpful. It was, uh, again, enlightening for me, um, very relevant. And again, Carolee, thanks so much. Thank you so much, James. And let me also say thank you for doing all the wonderful work that you do in this sphere because law is quite a scary thing to a lot of people and I really think that you're making it incredibly accessible, um, very good for people to be able to know that you're a normal person and that you empathise with them and that you're after being able to get the best result for everybody in certain situations. And I think your podcast and all your work is wonderful. And as I tell you, I'm pushing your message right over here in Australia. So I've got lots of people to go and follow you and things. So it's lovely. Thank you for everything that you do in step parenting and in, in, um, and in law. Thank you. And everybody, listeners, viewers, thanks again for joining us. Everyone be well, be healthy.